So our first talk is going to be given by identical twins on the topic of digital twins. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Uh, Tanmay and Chinmay Samak are identical twins. Um, they received their VTech degree in mechatronics engineering uh, from SRMIST India in 2021. And then they jo both joined the ARM lab at Clemson University International Center for Automotive Research, CUICAR, as uh, PhD students under uh, Dr. Venkat Krovi. And they pursue focus research in the field of autonomous vehicles. Their research interests include autonomy oriented digital twins, where one of them is working on bridging the real to SIM gap, and the other one is working on the SIM to real gap. <laughs> Uh, 
both proprioceptive and extraceptive sensor modalities for the vehicle. And uh, this essentially all in all compasses the vehicle distribution with, but that is just not enough. So the other component of the digital framework itself is the environment, wherein this is just a sample uh, environment uh, we have modeled right now. And of course, there's the possibility of having different environments of across the scale of OD. But what you can see here are the different uh, features in this environment. For example, it encapsulates the hardware and auto scenario for off road autonomy validation. But more importantly, I have a mountain pass or a dirt road kind of environment where we can now test uh, off road autonomy. And that is what we have done in this particular case study. Uh, the other highlight that I would uh, want to mention here is that of the variability in terms of time of the day or the weather conditions. And all of these now to be simulated in the real time. For that, what we have achieved is uh, we have uh, real time or feedback uh, light maps for uh, uh, simulating the time of the day, which includes things like horizon uh, lighting uh, or as well as subscattering effects and reflection and refraction, etc. Uh, for weather, we have uh, procedurally generated uh, volumetric effects in terms of fog or mist as well as uh, static and dynamic clouds, then you have precipitation particles uh, in the form of snow or rain. And all of this, uh, what it essentially now does is basically allows us to look at the same environmental features uh, at different times of the day or under different uh, weather conditions, which is extremely crucial for you know, uh, constructing a test metrics for off-road autonomy verification. The other half, as I mentioned, is the FGPC framework, which has been uh, incorporated to automate and accelerate the off-road autonomy verification and validation. Uh, first of all, we would like to acknowledge Clemson Computing and Information Technology Center for helping us set up this sandbox cluster of three compute nodes, of which node three has been utilized for this particular work, wherein we have access to uh, two NVIDIA i100 cards, both of which have been life-sized to now generate eight segments per card, which is 16 segments. Lord, and this number has been uh, determined based on the uh, simulator resource utilization without uh, uh, in, uh, segmenting these. Uh, in terms of the deployment, we have adopted a packagerization approach, as you can see from the image here, uh, and leveraged Kubernetes to now orchestrate multiple uh, containerized simulations in the cloud parallelly. Uh, and in terms of the deployment, there are two uh, deployments working parallelly here. One is the simulation deployment, which takes care of as well as the API which communication data to and from the simulator. And a second deployment uh, that now is a control server uh, and a web viewer uh, server. So what this essentially does is three things. One is establishes and synchronizes the communication across all of these different modules you see. Secondly, it now uh, live streams the uh, simulation feed from the HPC cluster to a thin client which can be a personal laptop, for example in real time and uh, on an interactive web viewer interface. And finally, also logs and stores all the data from the HPC to the thin client for post-processing and analysis. And this data again has two components. One is the simulation metrics or the uh, KPIs for the autonomy validation. And secondly, the HPC resource utilization metrics as well. So with the knowledge of the digital twin framework and the HPC framework themselves. Uh, let's now talk about the case study that was presented in this work. Uh, we have purposefully chosen an intuitive candidate autonomy algorithm, wherein, uh, as you can see, uh, the autonomous razor is driving in an off-road environment and continuously visually surveying its uh, environment for any potential uh, threats for, that can be uh, imminent in collision. What the perception pipeline feeds to the planner, which is a finite state machine planner in this case, are the co class confidence and size of the object detections around it. And the planner, based on those data, determines an AEV trigger, which on the lower level controls the throttle and brake actuators for the vehicle. Uh, simultaneously, uh, the planner also takes into account the time and weather conditions uh, in the form of ambient light and uh, the presence of fog or mist in the environment to activate or deactivate the lights of the vehicle, which naturally aid the perception pipeline uh, to start that, that will begin. So with that in mind, here is a 
the entire candidate algorithm in action. This is the live feed from the front camera of, mounted on the uh, digital twin of the laser, where it is detecting the uh, objects present in the environment. Again, these uh, detections have been resolved and uh, balanced to make sure that there are no false positives for the uh, algorithm being tested under nominal conditions. But as we will see uh, going forward, when we apply the different variability test matrix, uh, the algorithm starts uh, performing different, uh, differently in different cases. So towards the end of the uh, validation pipeline, the candidate algorithm is supposed to apply emergency brakes by uh, after detecting the animal herd on the road. And if I click forward, this is what uh, the actual deployment in the cluster looks like. Uh, again, as Chinma mentioned, this is just the thin client visualizing the simulation feeds that are running in the cluster parallelly. Uh, particularly, uh, we are running, we, are, we were able to run 16 parallel instances of the simulation based on the computational demand, and these can be scaled up or down basic, basically based on the uh, computational resources at hand. So, uh, to begin the variability analysis and test case generation, we looked at four different perception models, and these were state-of-the-art Euro models which were not particularly trained in off-road environments, but just served as real candidates for this study. We looked at four different times of the day and eight different weather conditions, and again, the granularity of these variables can be set on demand based on the test uh, requirements. But in our case, this resulted in a total of uh, one variant test cases to be executed, which, as I mentioned, were executed in batches of 16. So, after executing those test cases, uh, we analyzed the results for autonomy verification and validation in two levels. First, uh, in a high level analysis, uh, we looked at things like pass fail criteria and the success rates of the different perception models. And this can basically lead to primitive conclusions or inference, like, uh, for example, in our case, EULO P3 model was the one that performed best as compared to the others. But what's interesting to note here is that because we are logging a lot of data from the simulations, we can start looking at key performance indices to gain an in-depth uh, understanding of each and every aspect of the autonomy pipeline and where vulnerabilities may lie. So for example, uh, in our case, we could analyze the pole and distance to collision metrics to determine the driving direction of the vehicle, as well as uh, check if the uh, distance to collision was falling within a certain factor of safety. Additionally, we could also analyze the AV trigger itself, which uh, would indicate fault in the planning stage. Uh, and as you can see, for batches 4 and 8 particularly, we have really low uh, confidence of the AV triggers. But those could also be a, uh, a result of the perception pipeline because that's stacked before the planning. So we could have things like uh, APIs for the perception pipeline, which in our case look like the detection confidence and uh, detection size. And as you can clearly see, uh, in the first case, although we had some detections, it was the planner that was at fault. But in the second case, uh, that is the batch A, we'll literally have zero detection uh, size, which means that the perception module was the uh, fault here. Apart from this, we can also look at other key performance indices for uh, actuator feedbacks, for example, that can gain insight into the control faults, or take a look at system level objectives and uh, faults therein. For example, collision count in our case, which were also used to determine the high level. To gain a little bit insight about the computational resource utilization, we log all the different metrics that you see, uh, the memory usage, CPU and GPU usage, as well as power utilization. Uh, but what's the key takeaway from all of that is that practically the 128 test cases that I mentioned took less than 1.3 hours to execute. And all of these simulations therein were running for 5 to 4 minutes. If we now theoretically try to extrapolate 5 minutes of simulations, for 128 test cases, sequentially one after the other, that would take well over 10.6 hours, and that's without considering any uh, transition delays or network latencies. Which essentially points us to the fact that we uh, we were able to reduce the testing time more than seven times uh, for the just uh, 128 test cases that I talked about. And this value is going to be more prominent and more effective as the number of test cases increases. Apart from uh, computationally analyzing the autonomy verification and validation pipeline. We also try to stress test the cluster uh, for the different uh, resource utilizations that I mentioned earlier. And here, all the blue bands that you see is uh, signifies a drop in the workload where we start from 16 parallel simulations all the way down to this one simulation 
instance running. And as hypothesized, the memory usage uh, was quite linear in nature uh, and scaled linearly up or down based on the number of simulation instances. But what's interesting to see is the nonlinear nature of the CPU and GPU usages as well as the power utilization. What this effectively uh, hints towards is that uh, running a single simulation instance is one not utilizing the available resource to the fullest and that may potentially cost you time or cost for testing in different uh, test cases as the number grows. But more importantly, uh, running a single simulation instance is not saving as much power as running simulations parallelly uh, if we are to consider the time that it would take to sequentially run one simulation after the other. Which basically means that serially testing autonomy algorithms is not actually sustainable where parallelization can actually help us uh, beat this bottleneck. In summary, uh, we first presented a high fidelity real time digital twinning framework for off road autonomous vehicles as well as their operating environments. We talked about elastic orchestration of parallel simulations within the cluster uh, and presented a case study for variability analysis of candidate off road autonomy algorithm, as you can see in the uh, video again. And finally, also talked about the uh, computational performance analysis of the HPC cluster itself. Moving forward, we are looking to expand the presented framework in different directions and aspects. Uh, there are things like zooming in on edge cases rather than full factor uh, Monte Carlo simulations uh, that we presented in this work. Uh, adopting active learning strategies for smart verification and validation, uh, imbibing an automated algorithm refinement pipeline within the presented framework, which not only gives the test results back, but actually refines the algorithm and potentially gives a candidate algorithm that performs well in most of the test cases. And finally, bridging the virtual and uh, physical testing paradigms by uh, imbibing workflows such as hardware in the loop or vehicle in the loop tests. So, uh, I would like to give a huge shout out to everyone who was involved in this research and would like to acknowledge the uh, HyperJS grant that enabled this research. And that brings us to the end of the presentation. Thank you very much for listening to me.